Before we begin the next story, here's a question for you. Where do you watch this show? Most likely on social media. And you form the majority of news consumers. 56% people get their news from social media. That's according to a new global survey. What's more, 85% are worried about disinformation and 87% believe it's hurting their country's politics. So the trend is clear. More people are going to social media to get news, even though they know that a lot of it may be fake. And this is not just a hot buzzword anymore, fake news. It's the reality of our times. We're living in the era of endemic disinformation and its impact is massive from geopolitics to mental health. Here's a report. Last year, on the morning of July 8th, former US President Donald Trump took to Truth Social. That's a social media platform he co-founded. Trump claimed he had won the 2020 presidential vote in Wisconsin. This was a baseless claim. All evidence pointed to the contrary. But that didn't matter. The post went viral. It started with about 8,000 shares on Truth Social. Then it jumped from the app to other social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. It swiftly became a hot topic for podcasts, radio and TV shows. Within 48 hours of Trump's post, at least 1 million people had read or watched content about it. This untruth spread like wildfire. Not long ago, the fight against disinformation was focused on two platforms, Facebook and Twitter. Today, there are dozens of new platforms. While some have disinformation guidelines, many don't. Controlling fake news on social media is like trying to slay Hydra, the mythological multi-headed serpent. For every chopped head, the creature regrows two more. Similarly, for every regulated social media platform, there are several that run wild all under the garb of promoting free speech. But no matter the source, disinformation is vast. According to a global survey by the UN, 85% of people are worried about the impact of online disinformation. 87% believe it has already harmed their country's politics. This has been accelerated by social media. It has become the main source of news. This is true for almost every country, from Austria to Algeria and India to America. According to a global survey, 56% of people get their news from social media, 44% from television and 29% from online media websites. The numbers are overlapping, but social media is the clear winner. Because with social media, news is faster than ever before. It's concise and tailor-made. But how credible is it? More often than not, it isn't. Do users trust it? Many say they don't. According to the UN, only 50% of people trust the information that social media provides, as compared to 66% for TV, 63% for radio, and 57% for media websites. Tech giants know this. They know that hate speech and disinformation is pervasive on their platforms. Yet, when it's time to cut costs, the fight against fake news is not a priority. Reports say this year, YouTube quietly cut its small team of policy experts. Same with Alphabet. According to reports, it left only one person in charge of misinformation policy worldwide. Last year, X cut half of its fact-checking team. And Meta, the owner of Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp, has also shifted its resources to Metaverse. This is a trend across the industry, and it threatens to undo social media safeguards. The result is in front of us. During the pandemic, misinformation was everywhere and people trusted inaccurate conspiracy theories. In the first three months of 2020, the world over, about 6,000 people were hospitalised due to this and at least 800 lost their lives. Disinformation is also out and about in times of war. We saw this with the war in Ukraine and now it's amped up again during the war against Hamas with misrepresented video footage and mistranslations. It all starts online, but results in real-world fear, anxiety, stigma, finger-pointing and even violence. We already know this, yet where are the guardrails? A global governance framework is a far-fetched dream. National or regional laws are hardly robust. So, tech giants continue to function with bare minimum regulations. They maximize profits at the cost of reliable information while users pay the price.